Okay, once you've got the coffee on the heat, a good machine and a good heat source will just take a few minutes for the coffee to start flowing through. Once again, make sure you never attempt to make a coffee with this rod inserted if you've got a machine with a rod like that. Just before the coffee is about to come through, make sure you prep up your milk jug. Now, for years, I would start, I would try and froth milk in a mug. If you're going to froth milk properly, you need one of these jugs. Your milk in a proper frothing jug should come just above the spout there. I think there's only one of me today. You use slightly less milk. If the heat source in the coffee is good, the coffee should be coming out in a dark brown wrap tail or very worst a steady drip just like this. Once again if you put too much coffee, sorry too much water in the machine, what you'll get is over extracted dish water, I think is the official term. Okay, as soon as you start to hear the machine, the sound of the machine changing it'll start spitting and gurgling, it's at that point you need to start steaming your milk. Steaming the milk is an art to which I profess I've not yet mastered. I have a very annoying girlfriend, or I should say fiancé, who's a trained barista who makes the most fantastic coffee on this machine every time consistently. Before you start steaming the milk, always just release the steam on. Just release the wet steam out. Okay. Use slightly less water than normal. Another mistake that people make is when steaming the milk, the tip of the steam rod should be in the milk. It should just make a sound like that. If you keep taking it completely out of the milk, you'll get large bubbles and you'll over aerate the milk. If you put it all the way in like that, you'll just end up boiling the milk and you will never be able to froth properly. So what you're aiming for is a constant steady sound like this. The first time I gave this machine to an Italian to use, she came back into the living room with a frothy a pot of milk with a froth like an ice cream on the top and that is not the idea. What you're trying to do is expand the milk to twice its volume and keep the bubbles consistent and small. You see that once you open the steam knob the coffee actually starts stops flowing stops flowing and that is why you don't need that rod. You could insert that in there now but it doesn't make any difference at all. I think it was something that was invented for the American market. It's never really improved the performance of the machine at all. Okay, use your hands to touch the side of the jug. You'll be, you will know when the milk is ready. This milk will absolutely be fine then. Okay, I'm going to give you two hints here. First of all, if you've got milk like that with big bubbles in it, just tap it. You'll see people doing that in the coffee shop and that gets rid of the big bubbles. Swill it around, do it again and what you should end up with is a very smooth, consistent milk. The other thing, while the machine is still was just being used, give the steam on a wipe with a sponge. Much, much easier cleaning it at this stage. Okay, next up, the coffee. Now, that there is a thick espresso shot. That's not over extracted. That's probably got slightly too little water in it. Um, but I like my coffee strong. And when you pour it in the cup, there's only going to be a centimetre or so of coffee in there. If I was a professional, I'd be able to do a nice little pattern on top. But despite the fact I've been practicing for years, Any trained baristas watching this and looking at the quality of the milk that I've come up with would be absolutely appalled with that. Not my best, not my best attempt. Um, but that basically is how you make an atomic. Now another little tip, always put some water in the jug when you're finished because trying to wash 
smash that jug out in the morning when that coffee's been sitting there all night is a nightmare. 